there there is uh, a risk of things not working out, and it's important that you proceed anyway, despite that fear um, and the the possibility that that might happen, because the upside is so glorious. I mean, I can't, I can't, can you imagine if either one of us decided to be a single doc provider for our entire career? First of all, you and I would still be cutting crowns like after 20 years of doing this and we would have any of us would be here if that was, yeah, that's true. (laughs) This would not even be a thing. That's true. I mean, at (laughs) some point you have to take a leap of faith and say, Hey, look, if, if they're 90% as good as I am at anything, that's, that's a win. So if, if you have a growth mindset, this is just the first step in many, many steps to what I would call that freedom practice. And what my definition of a freedom practice is a fair amount of redundancy. I used to call a freedom practice, a practice that had 40% overhead and like as few moving parts as possible. Three operatories, fine. You know, that, that, that's a freedom practice because you're not, you're not saddled with debt, et cetera. Now my new definition of a freedom practice is there has to be a fair amount of redundancy, which means that you're not the only provider. In fact, triple yourself. There's, there's not just one person at the front desk, but there's, there's, I don't know, three, there's not just one, you know, one, uh, hygienist, there's several. So you're less vulnerable to the whims of human resources, right? So that's the new, that in my definition, that's the new vision of a freedom practice. And you're never going to be free if you're the sole provider or if it's you and another part-timer and you're, you're, you you do not have enough capacity in your physical location. So there's a number of different check marks, I think, that you need to create freedom for yourself in in this role. 